What's up guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we'll be taking you through our favourite new features of the brand new Illustrator for iPad and why you should use it as a graphic designer. You can also download a free template file from the description below that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. Ok, I'm going to pass you over to Rory now who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So here we are in the desktop version of Adobe Illustrator and the reason for that is because the first feature so to speak that we're going to be discussing is just how easy it is to work seamlessly across the desktop and iPad version of Illustrator. So we've got the template document that we're going to be working from today open and to access this from the iPad all I need to do is make sure that this is saved to my Adobe Cloud documents. So to do that all I need to do is go up to file, save as, and within our save as window we have an option here that says save cloud document. So I'm going to select that. I've already set up a folder within my cloud document so you can do the same if you want or you can just save it loose within there but all I need to do is click save from here and now I'll be able to access this from the iPad which we will do now. Okay so here we are on the iPad and as you'll notice in the top left hand corner I've selected the your work tab. So now I have my cloud document folders that I have here. I saved that document into the GDP folder and as you can see here we have our template file. So if I just tap on this it will need to download first. This can take a few seconds but it's never normally that bad and as you can see we have our exact same template file here. I can go over to my layers panel and all of the layers have been maintained within here as well. So I'm going to close my layers panel. So the first feature we're going to be looking at is the pencil tool. Now why I think the pencil tool is one of the best features in the iPad version of Illustrator is just how freehand we can be with it and it's much closer to actually sketching on a bit of paper with a pencil or a pen which I think comes much more naturally to a lot of people. So we've imported a very rough and simple sketch here which we are going to trace with the pencil tool just to demonstrate this. And before I do that it's worth noting I've just set a a stroke color, I've removed the fill and I have my smoothing turned right up. Now you don't have to turn the smoothing right up but in this case I want very simplified smooth lines with few anchor points so it can really help with that. I've also set a rounded cap and corner to the strokes that we're going to be creating. So like I say I can just tap and drag as if I'm drawing on a bit of paper as I'll show you here and if I pause at any point we'll get a small flash and that's going to create a sharp corner for us. I'll do the same at the bottom here. So this is a nice wee feature as well. You can see I only have four anchor points here thanks to the smoothing that I've applied. So it's very easy and intuitive to use. So I'm just going to continue tracing the rest of this sketch and we'll see what we come up with. So I'm just having to do some very minor adjustments to the anchor points themselves but really nothing major but you can see how easy it is to do this. I'm going to switch back to my selection tool and lastly I'm just going to select all three of these leaf shapes and we'll just give them a fill colour just to give them a little bit more interest here. That'll do for now. I can always go over to my layers and just turn off the visibility of that tracing images layer to see the final result. Moving on to the next tool and this is a very similar tool but has its own benefits. So so this is the blob brush tool which can be found right next to the pencil tool here. You can see if I select it we actually get different brush options to choose from so already we have a little bit more flexibility in how we use this and the key difference with this is that we are creating filled areas instead of paths with strokes applied to them. So we can be a little bit more freehand which again applies even more to the sketching on a bit of paper type aesthetic of this. So I'm going to just leave this round brush. We have a few more options down here we actually have a brush size to choose from so I'm going to try maybe 15 for now and I may need to adjust this because again we are going to try tracing a very rough sketch. I also have a smoothness option here which I'm going to leave at around 6. I don't want this to be quite as smooth as the last example and I also have some brush settings within here as well so we can actually change the pressure dynamics using the Apple Pencil as well. So a little bit more flexibility with this. I'm going to go back over to my layers and turn my tracing images layer back on. 
and you can see we have a rough mountains sketch here and we have some more filled areas so this isn't really line work which is where this tool comes into play. I'm just going to change my fill colour, I'm going to go with something like a dark grey for this and I'm going to go to my stroke and just remove the stroke because I don't need that. Like I say we are creating filled areas. So again with this I can simply start tapping and dragging although you can see this brush size is a little bit thick so I'm going to go back and take this down to about 8. Let's zoom right in and if I try sketching again this is a little bit closer. I'm just going to do this very roughly and very quickly just as an example but like I say this is a nice way to be a little bit more freehand with it. You will notice if I apply little pressure and then start applying more pressure there is pressure sensitivity with this tool as well which is also really nice. So I'm going to speed through this and we'll see what we come up with. So you'll notice here I've really just gone around the outlines of this sketch and the reason for that is because I can now switch to my point selection tool and select one of the points in the middle shape that's being created and I can then just hit delete a couple of times and that's just going to fill that area in for me instead of having to do it all with the blob brush tool. Again I can do this here and that's just a slightly quicker way of filling it in and this is what we're left with. Like I say it's not perfect this is pretty quick but this is just an example of where you might use something like the blob brush tool to be a little bit more freehand and create something a little bit more sketched and rough looking. So again I'll go over to my layers and just turn off my tracing images layer to reveal what we've created with the blob brush tool. Okay so moving on the next feature we're going to look at is the shape builder tool. Now anyone who's used the desktop version of Illustrator will know just how useful the shape builder tool can be. We have essentially four outlined circles here so I'm just going to move these off so you can see that they're all separate and we're going to use the shape builder tool to very quickly and easily create something a little bit more unique here. So I'm going to tap and drag over all of these with my selection tool so they're all selected and I'm going to go over to this icon and tap shape builder. Now the pathfinder options are also very useful but the shape builder is just a slightly more intuitive way of creating and subtracting shapes from one another. So to basically merge shapes together all I need to do is tap and drag through the shapes that I want to merge like I've done here you won't really be able to see much. I'm just going to move my touch gesture off this and I'm going to continue creating some more shapes. What I can then do if I want to remove areas is simply tap within them and you can see they're being deleted. So I'm just going to keep going around this deleting the areas that I want to until we're left with something slightly more unique. And this is just a very simple example but as you can see we have something slightly more interesting created from those four circles and it was very easy to do this with the shape builder tool. Moving on to our last feature that we're going to be looking at and that is the grid repeat tool. Now all of the repeat tools are really useful however the grid repeat tool I'm going to focus on because creating patterns in the desktop version of Illustrator or previous versions has always been a little bit of a chore whereas this feature makes it much much easier. So we have a simple grouped design here. I can go over to the right hand side where we have our repeat options and I'm going to hit the grid repeat and straight away we already get an automatically generated pattern. So already this is much easier to use. I'm going to tap and drag this off so we've got a little bit more space. I can easily scale this down with the handles here to fit my design better and I also have these blockier handles to actually extend the pattern out and I can also do this down the way. So really really useful. I'll zoom in here where we have some more handles. I can also adjust the horizontal and vertical spacing of these. So I'm going to bunch these up a bit. I can also push them out the way as well. And I'm also able to reposition these within the frame here as well. So plenty of control. I can also go into my properties, scroll down and we have a few more options. So I can actually adjust the grid type to distribute these slightly differently. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. So it's not quite so uniform. And there we go. And the great thing about this is I can always tap in to edit the design itself very easily. So if I just double tap on any one of these, it doesn't have to be the one we started with. I can keep double tapping into the group and actually adjust things like the colors if I wanted to or move these around and you can see it's going to apply to all of them. So this is very useful and very intuitive to use and I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of use out of the grid repeat tool. But that rounds up our favorite features of the new Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. 
Okay guys, that's it for now, but do let us know what your favourite feature is by dropping a comment down below. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, then we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you, one, how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, Two, creative thinking and how to spark creativity. Three, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs. Four, how to pick the right colors for your designs. And five, how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free web class. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information that others charge you for. The link's in the description, you're not gonna want to miss it, I'll see you there.